champion and two-time AFC Offensive Player of the Year. I feel like Don King up here no, right no, now. Don't stop. Don't Super stop. Bowl 32 Keep MVP going. and 1998 <laughs> League MVP. Whew, I'm out of Keep breath. Going. Welcoming in 2017, most importantly, pro yes. football Hall of Famer, Broncos legend, and friend of the show, Terrell Davis. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, it's good to be back again. How you guys doing? Titty, no, no rings, no jackets, no rings. Uh, jackets? One, one ring, this ring. Right yeah, here, that's but a not, big one. Not, not the big one I came with last time. Uh, those things are heavy, one. man. I can't tote those things. So that, uh, you are here offering fans and hanging out with us, but you're also offering fans the opportunity to not only go to the big game, but to get a once-in-a-lifetime Super Bowl experience courtesy of Verizon. What is included in that, and how do people sign up? Yes, yeah, so check this out. So Verizon has a rewards program called Verizon Up, right? And it's really cool because it has a lot of cool experiences with this program. So Tuesday, January 16th, and Monday, January 22nd, Verizon Up members have a chance to have a trip for two to Minneapolis for an exclusive uh, Super Bowl experience. Okay. And all you have to do is, if you're a Verizon Up member, so check your Verizon or my Verizon app next week. Uh, for that opportunity to go there. If you have Verizon, but you're not a member, all you have to do is download the app, My Verizon uh, app, and uh, get started with that. If you don't have Verizon, then it's time for you to make that switch. It's pretty simple, <laughs> right? Make that, that yeah, switch. Right. To learn more about it, just visit uh, Verizon.com about the Verizon Up Rewards program. It's pretty simple. I like it. I you got, got it? Verizon, so got I'm about right to go and download all the right. app. Me too. All right, Get now let's talk a little football. We saw Leonard Fournette light up the Steelers in their first matchup, but since then the production has dropped. Second half of the season averaging just 3.2 yards a carry. Now, most people will ask, did he hit the rookie wall, or is yeah. it just that teams are forcing Blake Bortles to try and beat them? It's not easy running the rock, man. I think, <laughs> I think we all think that every week it's going to be 100 yard, you know, yards rushing. Right. And, you know, Leonard Fournette said, and training camp that it was easy. I remember, right? remember that. that? Kind of slow. Kind of yeah, slow, not right? Not as fast as everyone said it was. But he has some injuries. Right. Um, and what? it's just the way the, the league works, right? Yeah. Every week you're not going to rush for 100 yards. Right. Now, going to Pittsburgh, where he just beat up last time he was there. Right. I believe 185 rushing yep. yards. If you're the Steelers, you are not coming back into our house mm. and doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. And so with him, people are figuring out just what you said, Nate, is they don't have a quarterback that can throw the ball downfield. So why would you allow this man to roam and have freedom, right. you know, within the line of scrimmage? Right. So you're going to put more people in the, uh, box. in the box to make sure that if you lose, the quarterback has to beat you. You're mm. not going to let this man just beat you. So, yeah, it's a, it's a mix of all that. So to me, it's no rookie wall involved with this at all. Right, right. That's a good point. Yeah, you weren't much of a trash talker mm. during your career. But I wasn't? I thought I was. Yeah, you weren't much of that. He right. acted like it, but he really was. I yeah. talked a little bit. People didn't know that. <laughs> no, I wasn't. I wasn't trash talking at all. But there is a guy on that Jaguars team that is and is an unabashed trash talker. Let's hear what our guy, Jalen Ramsey, had to say about A.J. Green earlier this season. I told him almost every play that he was weak, that he was soft. That demonstrate facts. He just couldn't handle the truth. It was facts. Um, told him that his time almost up. Uh, told him that it was easy, which it was. He had one catch for six yards. Uh, I was just out there spitting facts to him. So <laughs> he, he got mad. Um, and then people trying to talk about the push. I mean, I pushed him every single play. We can go back and look at the film. I pushed him every single play. I told him to stop putting his hand on me. And it's a run play. Don't even put your hand on me. So he put his hand on me. I pushed him again. He just fell because because he weak. I mean, he's small. Now, look, this guy, that was just one example. He's he's talked about Steve Smith. He's talked about other teams. He's talked about the Seahawks not being all that they're cracked up to be. That type of talk, let's go back into your career. Can that help a team? Can that hurt a team? And you play with Shannon Sharp and Romanowski. Take us into the world of trash talk and how you size up Jalen Ramsey. I'm talking about your fellow dog, A.J. Green, and what that does around the league about him as a target. Well, Jalen's been doing this since he's been in the league, so it's nothing new. And I don't think it hurts him. He's a defensive back. As a matter of fact, I think it motivates him when he talks because he has to back it up. Now, I played with Shannon Sharp, Bill Romanowski, Shannon was a trash talker, mm -hmm. and it actually helped because it took the focus off of us, <laughs> right? So if he's yeah. talking trash as a tight end, uh, everybody wants to go after Shannon. So a lot of times, you know, with this one game, for an example, Derek Thomas, we were playing right. in Kansas City, yeah. and he trash talked Derek Thomas so bad that Derek had, on one drive, he had three personal foul feelings oh, and wow. got kicked out of the game. <laughs> wow. So we got their best player out of the game because Shannon knew how to trash talk. Mm. So, yeah. In situations, it could help the team. It's like and an so, art. I, yeah, yeah, it, it is really an art. Is. 
is it is not as long as you don't touch anybody or right. you know what Jalen did was pretty 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 clever right yeah, yeah. he gave he gave AJ Green a little shove the refs didn't see that AJ got upset came back and you know took him down uh, and he got the penalty so for me it depends on who it is and right. how you do it but I'm all for it I, I wasn't part of that 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 wasn't in my DNA mm. but uh, if you do it yeah, you better better back it up. Mm. Well, listen, you do, and I tell you what is in your DNA is playoff performances. The network is running these incredible promos right now of all you guys talking about what the playoffs mean, what they mean to your legacy. When that second season starts, TD, yeah. there's never been a better running back ever in that second season than you, and the stats bear that out. So I thought maybe we could take a look at some of your best playoff runs. Right, now, this that, is man. fascinating. We get players in here sometimes. They don't really want to watch their own highlights. They're, they're modest about it. TD's like, let's go. <laughs> let's go. I hope we got the but good ones. Exactly. Here's what I'm curious about. What yeah. plays you pick? Well, let's okay, yeah. well, let's, let's take well, a look. Let's, see what plays let's you go to the big. Let's see if I agree with this. Okay, so TD, come on up. Now, All right. let's go to the year 1997, okay. where the Denver Broncos go into Three Rivers Stadium oh, against yeah. the Steelers. This is the first snap of the game for Denver. First Talk snap. about a tone setter, Three River, and TD is off and running. Charles, okay. what do you remember about this day? So this play was important because we had just left Pittsburgh probably three weeks prior to that in the regular season, and we lost that game. We had the lead. They came back, and they beat us. So we, what we realized was we had to get up on Pittsburgh out the gate. Mm. And this run right here set the tone for that. Okay. As a matter of fact, at the end of this drive, we scored a touchdown mm. that kind of gave us a 7 nothing lead that really propelled us to winning that game. So this was an important tone setter for this game. And, I, our, and here's the deal. I'm not the fastest running back, so... I get caught from behind. Carnell Lake, Carnell Lake Carnell runs him down. Me. He got it, me. It, seriously, okay. it, as it pertains to this weekend with Fournette, he's doing the same exact thing. How important is it early for him to have a moment like this against Pittsburgh in that stadium? It's important, but I had John Elway. Yeah. <laughs> That's very Good important. Point. I had John Elway. You, you got to respect that. Good All right. Point. Let's go to the next year, 1998, Back. the divisional round against the Dolphins. This is nasty. Watch TD. He's going to okay. make one defender miss in the hole. Now look at in the secondary. He makes <laughs> The guy's wait, 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 wait. We got to see this again. Yes, it is Sam Madison. That's yes, TD. Nice. That was just rude. Why did you that, that, was just that was just rude. Oh, can, we, no. can we start at the very beginning, though? Because as soon as he gets the ball and plants that right leg in the ground, uh, like, that's a subtlety to exploding up field, TD, as is. we all know in the right. backfield. It, Seeing the space and then attacking that space. Going. So this is my favorite play. It's the 18 toss, 18, stretch. 19 toss stretch play. Yep. That's my favorite play. That's the go-to when coaches say, hey, TD, what play do you want? Give me a toss. And what I love about it is I have spacing. So I get the ball, and all I'm doing is I'm just kind of watching the line, yes. watching the linebackers, and I'm very patient with it. Yeah. And then when I find that moment where I want to come downhill, then I explode downfield. And so, stretch, stretch, yeah, stretch, 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 and that then is just make magic. Going from zero of course, to 60. Of course, my dog's up front doing a great yeah, job. Of just stand on bodies. He's not fast, and then he shows And then he's gone. Then he well, that's not, really? that's, that's not straight line speed right there. That's just that's a lateral, a lateral yeah. movement. See, yeah. this, this is the divisional yeah. round we call it round. You guys were coming off a bye here. So for the teams yes. this weekend that have not played in a few weeks, we're talking Philly, Minnesota, these teams, what would you say to them in terms of what is, what is in your mind space going in, coming off a bye? Fresh legs, whatnot. Well, for us, we played the last week of the season hard like we had to win that game mm -hmm. as a matter of fact we did have to win that game so for us we never took the pedal the foot off the pedal because we lost in 96 mm -hmm. so Mike Shanahan's philosophy was we're gonna play and play and play we're not gonna have a game where we're going and it's just kind of pseudo playing no we're gonna play and so when we came in from that bye week we were fresh and we were we had rhythm we came off a win came off a great performance so we didn't have to stress or try to press to get back to game playing shape. I hear if it. that makes any sense. Mm, so it does. It does make perfect sense. And let's go to the Super Bowl. It was billed as Favre is this, the Elway. Is this, now, how do you have these ranked? Uh, this is, is the this, coolest spin move I've ever seen. Watch what TD's going to wait. You, you now, go. TD okay. is the same play, right? Three, what are you talking about? Three, two, one. See ya. <laughs> and he is off. T talk to me. It's Eugene Robinson. The second worst thing to happen to him on Super Bowl weekend. <laughs> Go ahead. I mean, you're embarrassing me right what now. What are you talking about? I'm, I'm proud here. I'm just, I'm just proud of him. Number one, I don't normally spin. Right. That's not part of the way I run. Right. But for some reason in Super Bowl, Reggie White, I've, Reggie White I've done it. Face. Oh man, that hand hey, Santana. Look at, that, there Look at that Gilbert Brown right there. <laughs> that had a heck of a line. Figure. There he goes. All right, so you said you're not a spinner I'm by trade. I'm not a trade? spinner by trade, but I do think about this. I used to think about spinning a lot. I just never did it. Uh -huh. Right. Uh, but in this Super Bowl, and my best run ever, you guys don't have on here, 
I think is Super Bowl 33. Uh -huh. It's the same the next spin against, move the, against the, next the Falcons. Year. The Falcons is where I get the ball and I'm about to get hit in the backfield, but I come, but I spin backwards out of the tackle and run for like five yards. Yeah. Now it's only a five yard run, but, but I was proud when I saw yeah, that. I you know what's that. incredible about this yeah. game? Obviously, you guys were underdog. You got 10 touches in the first quarter. So I look at maybe this weekend, you look at Derrick Henry versus the Patriots. Underdogs, I don't expect them to win. Getting him involved early, how critical is that, man, for him? It's crucial. And go back to what they did against Kansas City, especially in the second half. I mean, they converted on third downs. Mm -hmm. And what they did was they were, they were scratching the clock for third downs. They held the ball eight and a half minutes coming out of from halftime, eight and a half minute drives. So they dominated time of possession, third down conversion, yeah. and running the ball. Those three things, if they take that to Foxborough, uh, not saying they're going to win, <laughs> they but they got a good chance of winning. I wanted to ask one quick yeah. one for you, because you have all these great moments. The loss to the Jaguars, you said, shaped the, the whole next season. If you're talking to the Titans right now, do you have anything to say to them about how they can go shock the world? Uh, do what I just said. Mm -hmm. Go shock the world. And listen, they're not... They're playing at this point. They were supposed to lose last week. Right. Yeah. So you can tell right now it is us against the world. And if they 